Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamenova Yoga. I'm Ali and today we're doing the first class of the new series. So I asked you to give me ideas or to tell me what you want to see from the upcoming themes and classes and uh, seasons and so forth and they were amazing ideas and I'll tackle them all over time. A lot, uh, one of the ideas was fruit and it was, it's a natural progression from uh, the previous series that we did. But um, also there was crystal healing crystals and there is uh, animal movements and flows which is amazing because we can bring animal movements into the classes which is phenomenal. And there was weather pattern suggestion for uh, uh, thunderstorms and all of those things that can really help us deepen our understanding of the soul, help us deepen our reflection, self-reflection, understanding of the self which is really the goal of yoga the goal of life and yoga is a great analogy for life so we're going to start today with my favorite fruit and <laughs> i have many favorite fruits and they're all on the top they're all top one favorite fruit so <laughs> just keep that in mind but my favorite fruit is date palm i have written long ago articles i really like the spiritual meanings of things um, the really, really, really um, profound metaphors or the really looking at things from a very, very open mind perspective. And the flower essence for dates is that thinking out of the box, um, euphoric thinking and um, anti-aging, cell rejuvenation, RNA, DNA rejuvenation. And also I really came across studies that in mice, um, they can have immunostimulating, immunomodulating uh, factors. I think if a scientist puts their time into dates, researching dates, they can devote a whole lifetime and come up with amazing stuff about them. Um, they are surrounded by mystic knowledge in, um, uh, in a lot of the Muslim traditions. Uh, the way we say eat an apple a day, they're saying is it seven days dates a day and in the morning and that's how you remove parasites and really rejuvenate the system i think for me dates what they do is because of the combination of sugars combined with amazing amazing polyphenols and um, not just vitamins and minerals but really compounds that some of them science knows about and some really are not that well studied or discovered um, they can go straight into the system. The sugars are so rich. They can go straight into the system and really help energize the body, strengthen the body, strengthen the muscles, um, strengthen the immune system. Just on a cellular level, they can really rejuvenate us. I feel them. Um, uh, for me, they're a must. I have to have a really heavy in uh, dates day once a week or so. And sometimes if I shoot a class after that, it's a brutal class because the energy is real. And I don't combine them with a lot of fat because that's how you get the fluctuating um, sugar from the fat, not from the, the dates. The dates are phenomenal. There's no blood sugar issues whatsoever. It's the opposite. And also they're anti-parasitic. So they can remove a lot of and um, the necessary inhabitants <laughs> in our system. But anyways, thinking out of the, outside of the box, rejuvenation, anti-aging, energy. Uh, in, in Chinese medicine, they affect, uh, they um, really raise the key, uh, stimulating the key energy, the key channels, and also they can affect the stomach and the liver and the lung channel and the spleen channel they're profound they really have such profound effect the sugars are healing sugars just think about that and calories for me they don't matter with dates in general with nature they really don't matter i can really eat amazing amount of calories and there is no weight gain because nature just kind of does th things right <laughs> let's just say that anyways so I have an old article on my blog, I'll try to link it below about dates and their mystical and other uses. They are really, really emphasized for pregnant women, especially before birth, the month leading up to birth. Um, and they're really, really great, great for babies and newborns and children. 
and for breastfeeding moms they are the ultimate milk producing uh, food there's nothing like dates and with that being said i know most of you are not producing milk <laughs> probably right now probably a 10 percent of you but with that being said let's remember to flow with strength and ease Starting at the front of the mat and walking back and walking forward. Now, just lift your knees and explore the movements. Don't swing around anything. You don't want to swing in the knees. You want to control the movement. Walking back and forth, connecting with the core. There was suggestions for another Awaken the Core series, for Flexibility series. So I think I will weave those things into the classes. And then I'll dedicate series to that as well. You use the opportunity here to awaken the core with all these movements. Each movement is allowing you to really connect. All right, now we're gonna bring the arms in. You can walk or you can stand. Fluid movement, undulation. Really feeling the spine. The way we say awaken the core, awaken the spine now. And we're gonna step onto the feet and move the spine. Great. Stomach vacuum. Inhale the hands over the head, lift and reach, clasp, reach to one side. Dates to me are strength, regeneration, renewal. They are euphoria. They are absolute, absolute insane energy, lightness, healing. The power of nature, persistence and strength. Think about a date palm and also the clusters of flowers on the date palm. It takes 12 years to establish a male date palm tree, but then the female can give 100 to 250 pounds of dates for many, many years. They're prolific. One more. So think about that strength. You can bring your hands over the heart, close your eyes and think about your trunk as a date palm trunk. It's taken years to establish. Beautiful root system. And then the branches and the fruit. It is ephemeral, etheric, as most fruit is. The branches of a tree, the branches, the flower of a plant, 
those are the ephemeral qualities what connects us to the universe to the ephemeral side of existence standing tall for a moment feeling the strength of a date palm connecting with that side of that genius of nature the roots are feeding your body and the top is feeding your soul and it is all one soul and body become one also self-expression allowing yourself to express yourself without being suppressed pushed down pushed around silenced it's allowing your unorthodox nature to come through to come out to be authentically you without having to conform to set rules about how you should be but really listening to your authentic self a date palm really requires a lot of sun it requires desert climate and a lot of sun bright hot sun and since we started gardening i have said so many things that are interesting analogies you only have a shadow when there is the sun out when there is sun out when there is sunlight you can you can control the sunlight you can bring in things to control it but you cannot control the lack of it when there isn't enough sunlight those are gardening things but a good different analogies for our shadow because shadow work is one of the most important things we can do nowadays and i think i will throw in a little bit of that in this class because we're all when there's something happening in the world that is um, anxiety inducing everybody's shadows shadow is coming out people are acting out of their shadow because everybody is triggered there is fear and everybody is easily triggered so you are interacting with people's shadows and they're interacting with yours more so than ever before and if we don't have our shadow integrated it's this subconscious leakage of energy that is coming outside of our control big breath in you're in the sun there is your shadow it's part of the sun how the sun works own it just as an understanding right now as a feeling as a visualization owning the shadow feeling the sun and the shadow in your palm trunk and let's inhale the hands over the head and let's exhale fold inhale look ahead plank we're gonna move now chaturanga upward dog Chaturanga, downward dog. Inhale the right leg up and open the hip, lift the knee, lift, lift, lift. Drop it behind, wow thing. Lift the hips, feel the fluidity. Exhale back into down dog, step it back and a few more spinal moves here feel the upper back and you can reverse it round the back push back round the back push back round the back push back round the back Push back, great. Take the left leg up. Step it behind while thing. Lifting. And exhale.
yourself back into down dog step it down take the right foot across we're gonna do crosswalks take it across and then left across take the right across left across walking forward and walking back all the way back to down dog nice deep joy breath inhale the right leg up open again the hip lift the knee drop it behind while thing and let's bring the hands back down step the right foot through high lunge exhale both hands on the outside of the right foot and you can roll onto the outer edges of the feet and again a little bit of undulation walk to the front and we're going to come back up Lower the knee down, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Exhale, plank, vinyasa. Now we're facing dog. Feeling the upper back in down dog. And let's inhale the left leg up. Step it behind while thing open. Hands on the floor, step it through. High lunge. Exhale the hands on the outside of the left foot. You can roll onto the other edges of the feet or on the other edge of the left foot. And again, a few undulation moves, wave-like. Circular, wave-like. Waterfall-like. Moving like the wind, like a tornado in circles. And walk your hands to the front. High lunge, real nice deep, wide high lunge. That really gets the left leg engaged. Pushing the move through. Four through the glutes. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And chaturanga. Up dog. Chaturanga. Down dog. Let's bring the knees down on the floor. And a few more undulating moves you can experience both directions rounding the back and then pushing back and pushing forward and then rounding Changing the direction again. 
awakening the spine we can do a whole series on awakening the spine there is nothing more important than that really so that would be the awakening the core <laughs> all right take the toes on there downward facing dog inhale the right leg and open and open the knee open the hip exhale it behind while thing lifting the hips high and from here hands down on the floor step the right foot to the front take the left knee through a uh, left foot through in a small squat step it back walk around to the back and high lunge here hands on the floor walk around so we're really think of it as lubricating the joints we're moving here and just getting into the nitty-gritty of the squeaky places <laughs> so to speak you can open here the foot and the knee as you come into the front into the right and flex the foot it always protects the knee move with integrity even though it's not necessarily in the box when you feel the body you get the best guidance of how to move great coming to the front high lunge again i don't need lowering the knee or little hops one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten chaturanga your spine should be loosened up down dog let's take the left leg up step it behind while thing lift the hips high and hands on the floor step it through high lunge exhale the hands down and we're going to thread the right foot through and back walk around to the back and here you can begin to move into the hips side to side opening the knee a little undulation or side to side walking really loosening up the obliques and the hips think of it as an opportunity to bring circulation in areas that need it back to the front high lunge 10 hops or 10 knee dips 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 twist We can release down, plank, knee on the ground, walk your hands all the way to the left side and a few more moves here on the left. So move into the hips circularly, circularly and then into the shoulders 
and bring in a little bit of backgrounding into that move. Again, loosening up the spine. Bring in the lower back as well. And walk over to the other side. Some things in nature, when you just observe them, you get a sense, a feeling of the intelligence it took for that thing to come about. Whether it's dates, amethyst stones, or the perfection of a strawberry. Great, and back to the center, exhale. And we really connect with things as we observe them. Inhale the right leg up. You can lift, lift the knee high here. Feel the stretch in the obliques. Great, and step it behind. Well thing. Hands on the ground, thread that right knee across and open here and from here we're gonna dip the booty down you can be on the tippy toes on the left side and lift up dip it down lift up dip it down reach with your hand and when you lift reach so you're looking for elongation getting into the obliques great and plank chaturanga up dog chaturanga down dog think really elaborate moves let's take the left leg up and you can come onto the tippy toes on the right side and open that knee lift it as high as you can bring your heel in towards your body and lift. And breathe. And drop it behind. Wild thing. Lift, lift, lift. Hands on the ground. Take the left knee across and open it here. Wild thing style. And let's dip it back, dip the booty down. And you can reach and then reach over the head really big. Reach, reach and explore that move. A few more. Explore it, really feel how the different parts of the body, the different muscles activate, how the different joints Activate. That was another suggestion. Classes dedicated to joints. That would be an anatomy. <laughs> and plank. Chaturanga. Up dog. Chaturanga. Downward facing dog. your hips dance here side to side one two three four five six seven eight nine ten you can be free form here 
it's you just side to side 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 and now more of a belly dance move lifting or that's a even physical therapy move lifting one heel which lifts one hip and then the other Think belly dancing and plank and chaturanga and lay onto your belly walk your hands to the right press the toes down squeeze the elbows inward and open here and opposite side and back to send the hands underneath the chest or by the chest press yourself up plank take the right foot on the outside of the right hand open the knee and the foot open the right arm up creating a circle with the arm and lower down take the left leg in a beautiful circle or we can do two really feeling the joints here we're we're using the spine we're using the hips the knees the ankles the shoulders in an organic way opposite side feel it opposite side feel it opposite side feel it opposite side really feel it opposite side really big you don't want some measly little circle here you want to expand outside of your box opposite side a few more reach feel really feel the integrity of the hip connection to the knee connection to the toes opening as you move you will feel the spine as well a few more really feel as if you're opening your chest to the universe last on the right side or on one side last on the left side and plank chaturanga upward dog chaturanga downward dog inhale the right leg up step it through high lunge hands in prayer twist inhale come out of it step into warrior one this is gonna be a little harder so you can explore it go back to high lunge and again twist but more in a warrior one alignment and coming out straighten the leg revolving triangle alignment but hands in prayer lower down twist it's gonna bow, challenge your balance great exhale in intense side stretch you can here do a little undulation so drop the belly down and lift it up Drop it down and lift it up. Plank. Chaturanga. Up dog. Chaturanga. Down dog. Take the left leg up. Step it through. High lunge. And simple twist. Open the chest, drop the shoulders down, lengthen, 
through the crown of the head so the neck feels spacious and beautiful. Lifting the chin. Inhale. Coming out of this and you can step into warrior. One. Work with you with the hips here aiming that back heel down but whatever feels good so ask your ankle before you you yank into a pose before you crank into a pose really ask ask your body you will get an answer especially when we're doing physical poses but we get an answer from the body about pretty much everything and we're going to bring the, the right elbow on the outside. Do your best here, it is intense. You feel your limitations here, where your box ends, <laughs> the walls. And good. coming out, straighten the leg, square the hips, lower halfway down and then twist. Great. Woo! Intense side stretch. Move the spine here and drop the belly, lift it. Drop the belly, lift it. Drop the belly, lift it. Drop the belly and make it a little more fluid, figure 80. The symbol of eternity. And speaking of the symbol of eternity, turn to the long side of the mat and take a little bit of a horse stance and start moving side to side with flexing the feet, pushing back into the heels, side to side, side to side. And then side lunge to side lunge, 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 and then side lunge with figure eights, reminding ourselves about the true nature of our soul. Our nature is eternal. Moving again, really lubricating the joints, the shoulders, the elbows, the spine. And calming it down a little, mini moves, and back to the front. Here we're going to draw a few circles with the hips. So you're moving the hips circularly. And then reverse it. And from here we're just going to drop in semi down dog, we're in between down dog and plank, drop your heels to the right and stretch that entire left side of the body. Flex the feet, opposite side. Drop it and sit into the hips here, press into the right hand. So the right hand will provide you with that stretch. Beautiful, plank, chaturanga, up dog, chaturanga, down dog. Fruit on one side, I like to do the series because it's villainized, the sugars, because we don't understand how nature works, so we think white sugar and sugar in fruit is the same thing. And I don't think there's anything as healing in nature as fruit is. To me, fruit beats flowers. 
so that is a little bit exciting doing something a little it shouldn't be taboo but it is let's inhale the right leg up step it through come up high lunge hands in prayer twist really loosening up we're going to be a rubber rubber man at the end here we're going to step into chair at the front so take the left leg in and chair with a twist and back to high lunge with a twist chair with a twist high lunge with a twist last last chair high lunge and come up breathe strong stance let's draw a few circles with the hands here so again be elaborate with your moves you feel the obliques as you draw this it's not just kind of whatever you feel it you feel 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 the obliques you feel 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 the obliques you feel the rib cage you feel the back the spine the shoulders the hips Exhale down, plank to chaturanga, to upward dog, to chaturanga, to downward dog. Inhale the left leg up, step it through. High lunge, big high lunge. Nice to dry breath. and twist feel the twist chair with a twist high lunge with a twist chair with a twist high lunge with a twist chair with a twist High lunge with a twist and come out nice big elongated circle so make sure before you begin that everything is lifting up reaching up in you your spirit is reaching up like a palm tree and really again I, I have no better way of saying it be elaborate in your move so you just feel it be one of those expression dancers <sighs> expressive feel it and when you reach right here for example which is the diagonally opposing the psoas you're gonna affect the entire psoas from the rib cage all the way down to the knee you can keep a small bend in the knee to protect it a little bit of an elongation in the tailbone so that your everything is activated core and opposite side feel it and you can exhale down chaturanga up dog chaturanga down dog breathe you should be breathing like crazy right now walk your hands to the back open the feet yogic squat do a big big sweeping move with the right hand and clasp behind A big, big sweeping move, clasp behind on the other side. Mm -hmm. 
release, straighten the legs, feet still pointing outside, and walk, walk your, bring your shoulders behind the knees, walk your feet a little closer, wiggle, wiggle, and reach. And release. Yogic squat. And crawl. And plank. Chaturanga. Up dog and knees on the ground so ask your body before you do this they have been loving semi quietly the chaturangas on the toes because it gives me a really good opportunity to go into the upper back so you can be on the toes and then do the up dog and just feel the difference here Both are good, both ways. And you can push back a little bit on your knees. So you can push back with an arch and, and then you can bring your, your tailbone down, belly in, pushing into the lower back. And again, pushing into the tailbone, lower back feeling that move, resisting with the hands and really feeling the obliques here and every muscle in the spine, in the shoulders, every faucet, faucet and chaturanga, upward dog and chaturanga, downward dog. Let's take the right hand to the left ankle and look under the shoulder. Another twist. Opposite side. You will use your hand to bring your in so that you can go a little deeper in here. down dog, lifting through the tailbone, knee held the right leg up, bring the knee in, step it across and you can split your legs here, kind of like little semi splits and lower down. A little bit of a twist in the lower body. And lift back to down dog, opposite side, split and slide and glide. And come up. Down dog, take the right leg up, step it through, and warrior two, finally. Sophie is back, gracing us with her sh hair shedding, we just vacuumed right before the class, and then she laid on the mat, and now I'm just <laughs> having the, the benefit of dog ownership hair. <laughs> Take a real nice deep, deep pose, deep stance. Feel it. Again, be elaborate in your pose. So you feel your hip, you feel the left hip. You can lean back into the back body. Pull the belly in. Relax the shoulders yet feel their strength.
Warrior 2 is one of those strong poses that really represents the sun, the Aries element even, the warrior. And because it's a standing pose, there is a shadow element to it as well. Within our strength, we can find the strength being strengthened by the shadow or it could be just inauthentic strength we're standing strong here covering up for something so finding authenticity in our stance not only physical stance but our stance in the world what we stand for this is a really really good time to contemplate the shadow meditate understand ourselves better feel when we come from an authentic place and it feels like true grounded strength and when it is a pushed forced strength there is effortlessness humility a humble quality to true strength there is no need for flashing it around, being forceful with it, pushy. Its true strength has a quality to itself that is very different from force strength. And when we integrate the shadow, we see the elements in us that are supposedly forbidden or unconscious, things that we reject in ourselves, or sometimes it's just things that we we adopted before we were fully conscious, fully aware. So they are running a subconscious program. So seeing the elements in ourselves that motivate us to act, that push us, that create action, sometimes triggers, contemplating those to understand better our nature and integrate the shadow into the persona, into the personality. And sometimes the beauty with physical stuff is that you don't have to understand it mentally. You may never understand your shadow and you can integrate it really beautifully by just physically, presently moving. So that's why I'm not into psychology. <laughs> Step it down, chaturanga, upward dog, chaturanga, downward dog. I don't mean I'm not into psychology for other people, but that's why I'm not teaching psychology or I didn't go into psychology because I realized that there's so many ways to the goal and the physical is absolutely my, um, my jam. Let's take the left leg up and step it through. And warrior two, again, feel it. Be present in the body, coherent, feel resonance. Feel harmony, find it, tap into it because it is there in, indeed. The disharmony is fabrication of the, the mind and the heart. Those energies having a hard time synchronizing. So there is an element of surrender, letting go. That was another suggestion for a series, letting go series. And I will, inter I will keep those elements of flexibility and letting go in all the classes. Because yoga is truly all about surrender and harmony. Lean into the back body, understand the shoulders here. Feel integrated physically in your body. Feel the body parts integrated because that can translate into integrating the shadow into, into the personality. So it's not something hidden, something just pushed to the side that motivates us in an unforeseen trigger ways. But it's something that we can turn around and make it a learning, a growing opportunity, part of our strengths really. That's what astrology teaches. It was a big realization that there is no negative qualities you have. They're all part of your 
strengths if you integrate them properly. Prone to anger, then you have a lot of zest and fire to do things other people can do. Uh, it would be Mars in Aries or uh, uh, difficult aspects to Mars, that those aspects can give a lot of strength. A revolutionary. Self-doubt, you can turn it into being very thorough with details in your craft. And exhale. Plank, Chaturanga. Up dog, Chaturanga, down dog. Breathe. Inhale the right leg up, step it through. Warrior one. Sink a little deeper, feel the upper mid, lower back, the belly. We'll come here on earth with a unique blueprint. And everything is creating that chart that we are, that harmonious 360 chart with areas of growth, of rest. So the easy qualities are the areas of rest. The gifts sometimes can be rest, sometimes not. And the ones that we don't like, the flaws can be the areas of growth and work and enlightenment and self-awareness. Step at the front and wrap your left leg around the right and hands in prayer, aka twist. Let's see if I can do my own twists. Since I came up with them, I better be able <laughs> to do them well into my 80s. All right, opposite side. Whichever side you chose, do the other one. Step it back, high lunge. Drop it down. Exhale down. Vinyas. Take the left leg up. Step it through, warrior one. Yoga also gives us the opportunity to revisit the looping pattern in the head because the pattern is really what matters and what really manifests into our life. So if there is a repeated pattern, continuous conscious and unconscious and a kind of buzzing pattern, yoga allows us to stop and observe it as an observer so don't stop yourself from observing just remove yourself from reacting or judging be above and just watch it as an observer be aware of it sometimes that's the way to break a pattern become aware of it and wrap around Step back a little, choose one side first. And the other side.
release and step it out hands on the ground feet out and we're going to straighten the legs and bend them again I had a yoga warm-up type of thing for the hips and knees and ankles so feel your hips here as you lower down and straighten the legs straighten the back come up we're gonna do a few circles with the hips and a few with the knees reverse it and hands on the ground tippy toes lower down tippy toes now lift the toes heels toes heels toes heels toes heels toes take a big step to the side plie circles with the arms and opposite side and one side reach opposite side reach and again and again one more last one hands in prayer let's lift the heels and lower one two three four five six seven eight nine ten plank chaturanga side plank chaturanga side plank you can do it on your knees you can do push-up partial chaturanga a few more two last ones and walk your hands towards your feet we're going to move side to side here in a squat so when you move to one side open the foot and when you move to one side open open again think lubricating that is just a way to think of lubricating the hips big part of my healing I owe it to dates so to me there I've written posts about date fasting <sighs> that's how amazing they are and I've eaten probably I should count them but there has to be 40 varieties of dates I've hunted down it wasn't difficult because <laughs> in California you can just easily find them and sit down soles of the feet together open and straighten the right leg reach with the right hand towards the left look behind you you can wrap under opposite side
release, reverse plank. Double pigeon, flex the feet and bring the shin bones on top of each other. Since we're twisting, let's explore the twist here. You can explore both sides of the twist, either on the knee or just open towards the top knee. From here, we can just walk around, end up on the other side somewhat, flex, feel, surrender, let go of the tension and holding on, allow, the hips are so much a representation of, of being grounded, first chakra. Opposite side. And feel free to bring essential oils. You probably do already often. I have a mirror here and I started the class by applying mirror and it smells phenomenal and lower down. A big ha or ha. Big breath in and ha. One more. One more. If you can make produce sound, do that if your environment allows that. Right knee in and across. Left knee in and across. A plow. And shoulder stand. And lower down. visual loop here so it's almost like a circle with your eyes and a circle with your eyes and you follow it with your mind's eye or with your With your eyes closed, 
you can create a visual loop or a visual circle to follow and you're gonna follow it with your mind's eye or with your eyes and you see this golden golden circle that is just moving in front of your face in front of your eyes and you're just looping it around and following it and that is your anchor you can think of anything you want else you don't have to think obviously the goal is to not uh, but you could think about anything and use as long as you follow that loop you will um, you will get into a TM meditation or into a form of a meditation you can bring a mantra you can just for each loop you can say um, um, in your mind of course if you want to say it out loud there is no rules to any of this so feel whatever and do whatever you feel and feel whatever you do and just follow that circle I will let you I will go now and I will let you just do it on your own time we're not even started yet you'll start after I'm done talking and you're just gonna imagine that circle in front of you it's a golden circle golden thread bright light and it's looping around and you're following it either with your eyes closed or with your mind's eye which can also see and you continue following it for as long as you wish to and then you will slowly bring yourself out of this so as soon as I'm done talking you can go into your little visual anchoring it will really really allow your mind to relax and just follow it for anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes you can fall asleep you can stay awake and when you're ready to come out you just move around feel the surrounding areas allow yourself to come back into the body and bring yourself out so do it for 20 minutes ideally but two is okay five is okay whatever you have time for is okay and you can come back to it later in the day too and remember the flow is strength and is namaste